there's a village somewhere where the men are in charge. Mm -hmm. And the reason the men are in charge is because the men know the secret. So when a boy mm -hmm. turns 14, they beat the hell out of him, take him deep into the forest. They mm -hmm. shake him up and then they say, it's time now for you to learn the village secret. And the boy mm -hmm. looks up and says, what is it? And they say, Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag hier. This is the first part of this awesome conversation I've had with Dan John. We had to schedule another conversation because I have so many questions that I want to ask him. And I wanted to talk about strength in general, but the conversation developed into a great story about life where Dan shares the awesome secret to success his secret how he does it we talked about coaching we talked about weight loss it was just a great conversation now we've brushed on strength training a little bit but we will dive deeper into the technical side of strength training in the second part of this conversation hey then so 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 nice to meet you well thank you so thank you. and, and so you great to have you on is it lebe or leb or uh lebe le yeah, lebe, lebe stark. Yeah, it's the German word for uh, live strong. So German definition. Yeah, yes. uh, it's from. Uh, it's actually the same roots in Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. because yeah. leben strong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Great. So many, so many languages bounce around the same basic terms. It's fun. Yes, they do. Especially, especially uh, in Europe, you have a lot of um, a lot of stuff that you can borrow from the French and from yeah. the from the italians and spanish and what is also very interesting about languages that you mentioned it a friend of mine is uh, slovakian he's yeah. from slovakia and he says um they use strictly german words for certain terms they yeah. only have the german word for it yeah and which which i think it's it comes from world war ii i think it was when when hitler was in slovakia i think and that's the reason or World War One. I. I'm not sure about the history, but I think that had been Austria-Hungarian. It could be one. Well, yeah, books are translated into Slovakian. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, kind of cool. <laughs> the German translation isn't that good. I understand. Mm, mm, great, great. Yeah. So Dan, hey, thank you very much for joining. It's sure. it's it's a real real pleasure and a real honor. Uh, it's great to have you on, and uh, the reason why I wanted to talk to you is I'm just. I think I'm on a quest of 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 looking for knowledge and um, talking to great minds in the field where I can learn from. I sure. just had some great conversations with uh, Denis Vasilev, with the 11 time world champion from Kettlebell Sports. Then I had a great conversation with uh, Luka Kurcha from uh, Hardstyle Kettlebell Pro, where I was just um, molding those two worlds together for my own sake. And yeah. uh, now, now with you, I'm I'm really, really, really. And I'll be I'll be the midway between that probably. Yeah. Okay. Great, great. So, why would just start off right with this? Um, you say, and you can take it from there. You say you have spent your life with one foot in the world of lifting, and throwing, and the other foot in academia. So right. why you just share a little bit? Well, actually, it's kind of interesting. Uh, as we speak right now, I am retiring from uh, my professor job this week. I, uh, I've wow. been teaching. Uh, I teach uh, theology, religious studies, religious education. I'm, I'm, I'm well versed in all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Basically, my the last 23 years, I invented a course and uh, it's a course that's an introductory to religious studies. Um, mm. And then, uh, of course, my my first published paper was on Beowulf, the Anglo-Saxon epic, and then I, I published a paper on King Arthur, and then I probably have, oh, somewhere up to three, four hundred, maybe five hundred columns on religious education, and, and I, I had a weekly column for a long time, and uh, so yeah, so uh, I have advanced degrees in history and religious education, and I studied, uh, you know, I studied in the Middle East for a long time, uh, in Egypt and Israel. So, wow. and I still, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty good person to have in a trivia contest, you know, <laughs> uh, but then, uh, you know, and at the same time, since 1965, I've been lifting weights. Um, I have 
fact, I, up there behind me, I have uh, some of the first magazines I ever bought in my life, and they're all strength and health. And so, yeah, so I've been, so I, I, I started lifting and I, I never stopped. Uh, weightlifting helped me, of course, uh, in, here in the United States, we have those scholarships uh, for, uh, for college and I was a discus thrower. And, and then uh, one day I noticed that my income from strength and conditioning was maybe 10 times as much as my uh, income from religious studies. As so a teacher? I, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> wow. That, you know, <laughs> you know, might as well. And then, uh, you know, I, I can write a really interesting article on religious education or Beowulf and not make any money at all. I can write an article on, uh, you know, <laughs> three sets of three and make a lot of money. It's just crazy. <laughs> oh, this, it's crazy. Uh, just so, to understand you correctly, uh, uh, Dan, if I may interrupt, you're saying religious studies and Be Beowulf. I didn't get that. What oh, is Beowulf? Um, so every uh, the Beowulf is the Anglo-Saxon, the old English hero story. He fights uh, a, a monster, and then he fights the monster's mother, and then he fights a dragon. Um, you would, uh, for a year from, you would know more about Siegfried. Have you ever heard of Siegfried? Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh huh. The Germanic stories, yes, yes, it's those kinds. It's a be Beowulf, be uh, B E O W U L F. Ah, now I get it. There, there was a video game about him. Now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, Beowulf it was that called. summarizes my career. Uh, in <laughs> That's I'm, great. I'm talking That's about great. an old English epic, and you're talking about it. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I'll get it. Uh, and in fact, I, I still. I still use a lot of the information I used, uh, I picked up the studying Beowulf. It's, it's funny because I think there's real value as a coach. Mm. Well, first, I think it's important to be well-read just to be a good human. Mm. Mm. But when you read epics and you read uh, legends and you read, you know, like I hate it when people say things like, oh, these are the Greek myths, but Aesop or Aesop's fables have real truths in them. And I think they help you as a coach. Mm. Mm. So, you know, uh, there's a great, uh, Aesop fable called the fox and the grapes and uh, there's a bunch of grapes that are hanging and the fox jumps and he can't get him he jumps and he can't get any jumps and he can't get him finally he's exhausted from jumping and as he walks away he says well those grapes were probably sour and I use that mm. story with my athletes a lot because mm. you had a goal you didn't get it you had a goal you didn't get it you had a goal you didn't get it you quit and then you bitch about the goal. You discredit the goal, right? You say you it, it yes. wasn't worth it anyway. It wasn't worth it I, anyway. And you're like, well, mm. okay. I mean, and here's the funny thing. It's often true. There are many goals we achieve that just yes, weren't worth it. 100%. In fact, a lot of them, a lot of, in, in the world of fitness, a lot of the goals you chase, you know, um, 10, 15, 20 years, you'll still be like, yeah, I'm glad I did it. But yeah, mm. I, you know, especially that and that's something that i see now as i'm getting a little bit older with how my priorities change um right. especially when i look back now with kettlebell training i felt like my my physique is now getting a little bit leaner it's not as much the muscles are not as big as they used to be because i used to follow a typical i come from the typical bodybuilding split yeah. training program Everybody stuff yeah. So so now I'm seeing how my physique is changing and I I look at myself and I I like it and and at the same time I'm thinking wow back then I I would have been too skinny for my older uh, for my younger me right so that's and it's how something goals change most of us chase you know coming from the throwing you know throwers always like to be the biggest person in the room uh, mm. I like to be the biggest, strongest, fastest person in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's great when you're 30, but it's not so great when you're 60, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest with you, it, it impacts the, <laughs> your longevity, your ability to hold your own grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, but it's, you know, if you don't mind me just, you know, this is why I always like to start off my workshops talking about four words and it's health, fitness, longevity, and performance. And I use the Maffey Tone's definition of health. It's the optimal interplay of the human organs. Your mm. liver is doing what it's supposed to do. Your kidneys are mm -hmm. supposed to do your lungs. You're mm. free of disease. You don't have a mm. disease. Mm. Your blood profiles look good. Your, that's all health is. And stop right there. And then the next mm. word that, she, well, let's go to the next word uh, logically. It would be longevity. Mm. 
Longevity. And that's a quality right. and a quantity issue. People in my family don't live long. In fact, uh, yesterday we celebrated my brother Phil's birthday, who died last year and uh, breaks my heart. He was just a little mm. older. Mm. But we don't live long in my family. So we focus on the quality of life. Mm. Um, and it's true. I mean, you could live to be 120, but if you're drooling for 60 years, um, that's not a life I would like. Mm. Mm. And then there's this word called fitness, which is the ability to do a task. And then there's where I live, which is called performance. And performance is when on May 15th, I step on a scales, I weigh in, a couple hours later, they say my name, I step up on the platform, I put my hands on the bar and I whip it overhead. When I, get, I put, if I make the lift, I look around to see if the judges like it. That's performance. Fitness mm -hmm. is the ability to do a task. And, and, you know, most times when people talk to me about fitness, they talk about, well, and then comes the other two, which aren't in my world, but come up all the time. But that would be fat loss and increasing lean body mass. You know, if, and the best advice I can give about fat loss is don't get fat in the first place. You know, uh, and that's this is actually if I if I may just interject for a quick second, this is actually what we focus on: helping people lose weight with yeah. uh, in real life with kettlebell training and nutrition yeah. coaching. That's what we focus on. And I just um, I'm rereading the book. Uh, the seven uh, habits of highly effective people from Stephen yeah, Covey. Yeah. yeah, and he's in Utah. He he's uh, he, he's from Utah. Mm, great. From where I live. Yeah. Ah, oh, great. And what he says is he talked he talked about disease. So I think I'm just uh, paraphrasing now. But he says what you say now with with the weight gain or just uh, gaining weight in general or being overweight. Fat. Fat. Or yeah, fat. The idea of prevention that saves you from getting the disease or, or being overweight or accumulating too much body fat. Flossing your teeth twice a day. And that's what I like when I, when I uh, did that reaction uh, towards, I think that was your, the human burpee workout, I did a reaction to your video. Mm -hmm. And then I, after the video, uh, you have these, I think you always got it on your Insta as well, on your Instagram. Yeah, I always see it. It's... Yeah, a couple of years ago, somebody asked me to summarize my six decades and then said, can you do it in 50 words? And so, yeah, that's <laughs> great. That's, that's what I've learned in 60 it's, it's so much, so much. I, I remember what I said. I read it and then it was like, wow, this is basic uh, life advice that you can take with you yeah. no matter at what stage in life you are. Yeah, floss. Floss your teeth. And people... It's, it's weird how what people will find on that list mm -hmm. that they, that, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, pick up heavy things, put weights overhead, carry them. I, I don't know. I, I, it's, that's, those are my, that's what I've learned in my, in my time here on the planet. In fact, uh, when I turn 70 here, not too long from now, I will, uh, I will maybe add to it. Right. <laughs> Another 10 words. That's great. That's great. I really liked it. So you said it's health, fitness, longevity, performance, fat loss, lean body hang mass. On. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Health. Ah, fitness, yeah. Chrono chronological order. Yep. Health. Health, longevity, yep. fitness, performance. Put right. those to the side. Uh, okay. What people are listening for today on the podcast is fat loss and increasing lean body mass. But my thought is neither of those, uh, those are both byproducts of health, fitness, performance, uh, longevity. Mm. And if you were to sit down with yourself when you were 12, 13 years old mm. and said, hey, here are some things I, of course, you wouldn't listen. But no, of course. Uh, <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> but here are some things that, you know, here are some. You know, uh, when I sit down with people very often in their mid thirties, where they lost everything was from age 23 to 29. You know, they got, they moved out of the house, they got jobs, they started, you know, they turn on to the bar life and all of a sudden you wake up one day and all those years of beer and whiskey, and there's nothing wrong with beer and whiskey, but you know, if that's, if that's where the bulk of your calories are coming from, then there's problems. And so if you can not get fat in your twenties, you don't have to work so hard in your 30s. And if you can maintain certain things in your 30s, your 40s aren't so bad. And all of a sudden, 
you know, it, it's like all your body is like all good investments. The earlier you start, the better. The the better you worry about the foundations. Like if you're going to buy a new house, you know it's great that it has all these modern gadgets, but those are all going to break. But it's the floors, it's the walls, right. it's the foundation, it's mm. the mm. it's the water pipes, it's the mm. drain pipes. Trust me, when you own a house, mm. drain pipes are far more important than a microwave. Uh, you know, microwaves are easy to fix. Drains are a nightmare. So you, you just kind of constantly got to keep in that little. Mm, the fundamentals. Yeah. The fundamentals, yes. And, and you know what, what we also uh, see is in our nutrition coaching as well. And with the lifting, with the training, it's the basics work the most and they work the best. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we just had uh, my brother, for example, he recently called me up and we had a conversation about um, his uh, recent weight gain. And then uh, he said, listen, I don't want to go. I don't want to go outside. Oh, I don't want to go into the gym. Uh, I know you own the gym, but I don't feel like it. So I said, listen, brother, it's all about priorities right now. So what do you feel like doing? So he said, well, no, I think I thought of walking. So I said, hey, walking is, is great. So uh, we set him up. I think it was a month ago and uh, I I uh, had a chat with him a few days ago and he said he felt better because now after a month we aimed for 5,000 steps a day. That's not that bad was the goal. Am I, at five, I'm at that already today. Mm. Yeah. And I'm right, right now I'm at 19,000. <laughs> I'm, I'm walking around like a madman. <laughs> How come? How much? How much Wait, you got? I, I lied. I lied. Got to make sure I'm honest. 4,969 steps. I exaggerated. Okay. Oh I yes. And, and I, I have to remember it's, it's uh, 11, what? 11 AM in the morning, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. And we have 7 PM. Yeah. So yes. And so uh, with this basic interjection of just adding a little bit of movement, he already feels better. And what we also see with our clients is just adding a fruit a day or adding more veggies, just the basics. They work so incredibly well. And most of the time it's what you say with the fundamentals, we think we have to change everything all at once. It has to work right now. I want to learn to snatch right now. I want to clean and jerk the weight that you're jerking right now. And I don't want to look at a, at a boring exercise like the deadlift. I don't want to look at the hinge, but, but it's just the, the basics, which are so incredibly fundamental and important, which, which really, I, I do agree with what you say. It's the fundamentals. We had a really interesting thing. He's some Hollywood trainer here in the United States. If you're a Hollywood trainer, somehow that makes you better than the celebrity rest of trainer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, Here's what the guy recommends. Ready? You walk 12,000 steps a day. So that's, yeah. uh, that's about six miles, 10 kilometers. Yep. yep. And then you eat three, 400 kilo, uh, 400 calorie meals and two, 200 calorie meals. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the paper and I say to myself, so if I walk 12,000 steps a day and eat 1600 calories at my size, I'm going to lose weight. Well, no shit. <laughs> Well, no shit. I mean, and the guy, and it's interesting reading this guy's, you know, kind of play by play of the diet. Mm. Uh, one night it was like 11 o'clock and he only had uh, 10,000 steps. So he emailed mm. the trainer and said, he, and the trainer said, go outside and walk up and down the street until you get 12,000. But if you're wow. walking 12,000 steps a day and you're eating 1600 calories, of course. I don't care yeah. who. Now, here's the thing. You're going to lose weight. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean? So does that mean when, you know, you know, it, uh, if I weigh, you know, I've looked great at 120 kilos mm. and I've looked terrible mm. at 85, mm. Mm. you know, it just, it, it, what, you know, what does that number on the scale mean? And that, mm. I think that's mm. a big area for mm. a lot of people that, and, and of course in celebrity fitness, in Hollywood fitness, they only care how you look in clothes. Mm. You know, all you got to do is look at the Oscars the other night or, mm. you know, mm. look at, and they try to dress you up. So you can be that thing called skinny fat and be just mm. fine. Yeah, uh, be totally fine. My friend, Josh Hillis did an interesting thing with uh, the, and it's a very sad young lady, you know, I'm not picking on her, but a girl by the name of Lindsay Lohan mm. and uh, showed how she looked so good in clothes and then they had these 
paparazzi pictures of her in a bikini and she looked really quite bad and i'm not being an i'm not being a jerk i'm just saying that just because mm-hmm. you look good in designer clothes doesn't mean mm-hmm. you're gonna look good on the beach or mm-hmm. whatever you know whatever you're trying to do mm-hmm. Mm. And, and, you know, it's interesting. Uh, there's the same story with uh, Vin Diesel, where mm. Paparazzi's caught him with, with his belly, which doesn't look as aesthetic as he looks in the movies or with the tank top on, right? Yeah. Which is, which is kind of the same story. But if I may um, just ask you about stuff on strength, which I'm highly, highly interested in. Now, um, I, really, I really like to get your uh, thoughts on this. <laughs> Um, if we talk about strength training or strength in general, and we know strength is the ability to exert force, all right, to produce force. And strength training means building structural integrity to maybe be able to produce more force, okay? okay. That, yeah. That's how I understand it. So you have this, I read just a, a went or, or just glossed over your blog post about easy strength. Sure. So how do you, what do you make of this? When you say, okay, what is strength training? What does easy strength mean? And where do you stand on strength training in general? Well, you'll see if you study the history of strength training, and I've got, you know, if you look behind me, you can see I've got, this is just one of my libraries, but uh, you can see behind me that I've got, well, I, I mean, I, I basically have every, I mean, I have tons and tons of muscle magazines and strength magazines and books, and I've been to workshops and everything. And what you'll notice is, is up to about 1963, 1962-ish, is that strength training meant one thing. Mm. And then when performance enhancing drugs kind of show up, and they've been around a while, um, Everything sort of starts changing. Oh, heck, let me get that turned off. Everything starts changing, okay? Because uh, with PEDs, you can do all kinds of things. When you look at like, even like uh, great bodybuilders like Vince Gironda, uh, even Steve Reeves, mm, uh, mm. Uh, Steve Reeves, who was, you know, Hercules and all these things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Heck, even Reg Park, you know? And you look at them in the 1950s, early 1960s, and they have a body that you would see on... It would not be unusual to see that in an American locker room in almost any sport. Hmm. Mr. Universe 1955 Mm. looks like a guy who just trains at our gym right now. Mm. You know, changed so dramatically, right? The changes is, 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 you know. And and then once bodybuilding kind of took over, and that would be from that young Austrian boy made a big difference there. (laughs) uh, 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 What happened is, is that the, the, when, when I talked about strength training in the 1950s, it was a system to help me golf better, to throw the discus farther, to shot put, to play American football better, mm. Mm. Uh, maybe even to sprint faster. And then it became bodybuilding. And so guys like me who still are working with throwers and uh, elite athletes and uh, military and stuff, uh, I constantly fight against this idea of bodybuilding as the answer for sports and military application. Um, Mm, mm. So what the first thing you have to do is realize that when I talk about things like easy strength, it, if you read the history of our, of what we do, it's what we've been doing most of the decades. But when bodybuilding took over, hypertrophy work took Mm, over, mm. then it became split training, Mm. higher reps, Mm. go for the burn. You know, there's no way in hell, if you're cleaning 180 kilos, you're not going to go for the burn, Mm -hmm. you know, for God's sakes, man, you know, that all you try to do is get the hell off, you know, just stand up with the weight, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're snatching over 140, there's no burn, there's no blitz, there's no terrorize. It's, it's, it's an Olympic lift, you know? Mm -hmm. So easy strength really is just a return to the foundations, the fundamentals of getting strong. In a drug-free environment, people who do easy strength would probably look better than people who train like traditional bodybuilders. Uh, There's some wonderful documentaries now on Netflix about uh, bodybuilding and the the impact it has long-term on the bodybuilders. 
And right it, now? Yeah. What's it called? Well, there's about four or five of them. Uh, um, may, maybe the American version is different than the Swiss version. Maybe. Oh, you're in Switzerland. Or, yeah. Yeah. Switzerland. Hello, John Mark, if you're listening. Uh, what am I in <laughs> What am I in Swiss? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, my favorite joke about the Swiss. They're like the Germans, but without the sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> when people are highly dedicated, when they book one of our biggest packages where we combine training and nutrition to help them lose weight for uh, 8 to 12 weeks, um, which is a very intensive coaching session or a coaching program, they're always 10 minutes early most of them it's yeah. they're so incredibly dedicated you know well, the joke the joke where i live is uh it the joke is is it utah time or catholic time catholic or mormon time because mm. mm. catholic time midnight mass starts at midnight mm. and uh, here in utah if you say like i went to a party about two weeks ago down in a down south of here and i said well what time is it going to start and they said well we're going to eat at six and i said Okay, you're going to eat at six. What time does it start, though? Because, you know, I'm... Uh -huh. I'm... Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And they said, oh. I get it. I get and, it. Then, and then she said, <laughs> and then I finally had to explain to her that in my culture, where I, what I, when I do things, five o'clock means five o'clock, yes. 4.50, yeah. six o'clock means six o'clock. And she said, yes. oh, yeah, whatever. Anytime you get it. So more like seven, I said, but if you said seven, people show up at eight. Yeah, that's what we do you know i had a friend oh that's funny i had a friend he was always he was always late i remember and then we used to say hey let's show up at four because we had the we had the session on five or six right. so we started hey let's show up on four so at five we can be sure that he arrives that's <laughs> something like this so, no <laughs> like, i uh um no i of course it might just be a personal thing i have great respect for the swiss mm, who is your mm. great um uh, you guys had a great hero in your mythology uh, uh, Wilh wilhelm tell yeah yeah William tell and there's yeah. another one too back back way back in the days uh maybe i'm too young for that yeah but yeah. the apple that's the guy with the with the apple who oh, shot yeah, the sure, boy sure. with the that's apple good. in there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wilhelm tell yeah yeah that's great. Right, let's get back to lifting. Now that I'm lifting with, with kettlebells, you know, my, my primary focus is not strength now. My primary focus is getting better at the, at, at, with kettlebells, understanding oh. them and using them in a more conditioning uh, training st type of style where we have some strength and some cardio, uh, mm -hmm. which I, we really love these type of workouts. And they're very time efficient and sure. uh, it's great working with clients. And so, the bodybuilding idea, which I always tell folks, I, I, I'm, I'm like, listen, if you want to go for maximum hypertrophy, probably kettlebells are not the best way to go. Oh, but it's always right. that way. You've got to pick what's the right yeah. tool for, yeah. the, for the job. For the job, yeah. And it's yeah. so simple to yeah. say that out loud. Yeah. But, you know, I'll do like I'll do a work. Up, I'll put a podcast up about the, the humane burpee mm. uh, uh, or uh, here's here's the most popular the armor building complex. Mm, it's a yeah, double yeah. kettlebell thing it's double mm. kettlebells mm. first text first uh response will be can i do this with one bell i don't have any kettlebells can i do this with a barbell it's like for god's sakes man i mean <laughs> yeah. you can do anything you want and but <laughs> yeah and, and that's something that we sometimes experience when we do live workouts it's like folks be like hey listen i've exchanged uh exercise x with exercise y well then go ahead and do it. You know, maybe some thought went into the programming. So if you start ripping it apart, then maybe you rip apart the thought as well, right? So it's my life. You're going through my life story right now. <laughs> and you know what I like? What I like just, and then I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Um, there is one, you know, I, when we help people in this journey, in this just uh, getting in shape. Uh huh. And, 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 you know, losing weight, sure. it's one big factor that we always see and that we try to tell, not force our clients down the throat because that's, that's impossible because they're grown human beings. They do whatever they want. But it's one thing that we see. If you don't trust the process oh, wow. and if you don't trust the coach, then you're probably wasting a lot of your time because you ask so many different people for opinions or you say, well, 
I'm showing up for three times a week in a session, but I want to do this, I do this, I do this. And then they come up the next week, they're totally burned out. And it's like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't have go when or you shouldn't have gone for a run in the morning when you have a session in the evening. Maybe that's a little bit too much, right? So that's trusting the process, right? It's one of the hardest lessons. I, I, I love my mother, and she's been she's been gone oh over forty years now, sneaking up on forty one years. Mm. But my mother, uh, Depression era, World War II, all that. You know, um, she liked to always throw. Uh, uh, I was going to say shit, but you know, she always liked to show shit on goals, you know, mm. and uh, my, 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 and I learned early in my life not to even talk about what I wanted anymore. Mm. Um, I would love to sit down with little Danny and uh, little Danny John and say, you're going to make your liver living as a writer uh, and you'll get up every day. You'll write you'll Olympic lift, and then you'll talk on podcasts. Mm -hmm. I'd love to tell him that. <laughs> but the problem is if he would have gone to breakfast and said, well, I'm going to make my living as a writer, every <laughs> single person he knew would say, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough, you know? And so I think we're, we're, we're talking about the same basic concept here is that people, <sighs> yeah, I, this is what I do for a living. This is, I mean, I talk about, you know, five sets of two and, 15 swings versus 25. I mean, all day long, I'm either in the gym or talking with people or getting feedback or whatever. Hmm. And yet I'll put a program up that says five sets of 15 in the swing. Okay. Mm -hmm. First, first thing back will be, well, that's not enough for me. Well then do more. And <laughs> you know, I just, but for the thousand people I have on this program, they're all doing fine <laughs> with this. And you're, and yes. I, I don't, I, it's it's a bit of human nature that I find uh, frankly exhausting, you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Which is hard, you know. It's sometimes we have conversations about you know nutrition, and we have the same concept oh. where it's about you know um, just work with the basics because it's it, it's going to work. And why is it going to work? Well, we have some experience, we have some data. Uh, we actually we have been certified by Precision Nutrition, which are. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, they're doing a great job. And I did both. Yeah, I did level one and level two, which was really, really, really uh, enlightening. And it's like, listen, it's we can say, like I mentioned before, maybe upgrade your fruit intake, upgrade the veggies, maybe some smaller portions, maybe look at your protein, then get some movement, right? Just just, just the basics. But it's those like, little, yeah. Those little, ones, those little ones, yeah. Yeah, the little ones. And then I'm like, yeah, but my you know traditional alternative therapist told me that milk is like lead if you drink it. and and that's great and and, and so and, and, you, and that's good ignore the thing about here's the phrase i ask people now this is what if you want pushback mm. this is a question i ask in my assessment now uh do you eat salad for breakfast i tell you man people get upset mm. when you say would you eat salad for breakfast mm. Mm. because breakfast is toast and cereal mm, and, mm, yeah and you look at them like why is that i don't know it's always been that way <laughs> no it's it's only been that way for about 100 years or less mm, mm. Uh, much less probably 70. Mm. well yeah but that's what i always did and how how's that working for you well i'm fat overweight and i feel terrible so i have this idea of changing from what's making you fat overweight and feel terrible to mm. something that might make you feel good you want to make mm. that change well, I don't know. Nobody else. I, for God's sakes, everyone else you know is fat. And stupid. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else does it differently. And you know, it, it always comes. Don't don't you think it always comes down to just high level priorities? It's just, do I want to set this straight? And do I want to just? And I always say this. And um, you have to maybe walk towards the pl a problem with a certain sense of humility. Yes, okay. you think. You do everything right. And that's what we get as well. I do everything right. I do it all right. Yet it doesn't seem to work. And uh, I love, I, I probably rewatched a video from Jim Rohn. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Jim Rohn. He has a video. It's like a three hour video on YouTube. And I've rewatched it like for four or five times. And I love what he said. He said um, he had his mentor said, listen, Jim, you're going to make me a list, right? And you write down on that list everything which you think is responsible for your problems. 
So he came with that list, and then they read through the list. It was the weather, it was politics, it was friends, it was family, it was the city you lived in, the country, <laughs> the, the currency, the job, the boss, everything. And so he was like, well, there's something missing on that list. And he was like, what? He said, well, you, yeah. you're missing on that list. And, and that stuck with me. It's like, listen, if you don't, and, and that's, I think that's the, hard part of, of of coaching which takes a lot i do understand it takes a lot of empathy understanding where people are coming from and yet they have to reach maybe it is a certain level of of a breaking point where it's like listen i tried it and it's not working so i have to be humble and listen to what you say because you have some experience so maybe like you said with salad i'm eating this for breakfast or maybe we can switch or change some things and people just have to be humble right it's you know i recommend eating vegetables at every meal and i don't think what i just said is crazy Mm. i don't think eating vegetables at every meal every snack is crazy Mm. and yet the pushback i get on that phrase i mean it and then people start doing the uh, what do you mean by vegetable? What do you mean by serving? What do you mm. mean? You know what I mean. Shut up. No. All you do is push him back. <laughs> Shut up. You know. <laughs> and, and you know, especially, you know, and maybe we can pivot to that question because it fits so well. When zealots talk about their ideology, yeah. whatever it might be, right, then these are the kind of folks that people are listening to and then they hear some basic advice and because it doesn't sound like rocket science, they don't think that it works. It has to sound, yeah. right? And that's and the problem. So, yeah, that's when and, you've just entered my career. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think anything I say is, like for example, I'm, I'm for this uh, Olympic lifting meet I have coming up in a couple of weeks, I decided to drop down to a, a much lighter weight category. So people are asking, how am I doing it? And I said, well, I'm increasing the amount I sleep. I'm eating vegetables at every meal. And then after I Olympic lift, I go for about, oh, it would be about uh, about a three kilometer walk mm. carrying weights. Mm. Mm. Now, not one thing I said there it sounds crazy to me. Mm. Not one thing. And people are like, well, yeah, but what's the real secret? Well, I'm sleeping. Yeah, what's the real thing? <laughs> uh, vegetables, Olympic lift, walk. I mean, I don't, and, uh, but that's the, and the secret it, it, it in fact it's a, a, a thing i share with my students uh in my college class it, it, real quick I'll, it's a real quick story there's a village somewhere where the men are in charge and mm. the reason the men are in charge is because the men know the secret so when a boy mm. turns 14 they beat the hell out of him take him deep into the forest they mm. shake him up and then they say it's time now for you to learn the village secret and the boy mm. looks up and says, what is it? And they say, there is no secret. <laughs> there is no secret. That's and, the secret. That's and, the, oh, that's the enlightening moment. That's that very enlightening. So I've lost 10% of my body mass since January 1st. And it's about two to three kilos a month. Mm. And how am I doing it? I'm sleeping, vegetables at every deal, meal, I Olympic lift, and then I go for a walk. I just told you mm. everything. Now raise your hand and ask me what the secret is. Mm. There is no secret. And our clients, when they have lost a substantial amount of weight and fat, they walk around and they come back to the studio and they're like, people are asking me, how did you do it? And I'm saying, well, and what did you say? I'm saying, well, I started the lifting. I discovered kettlebells. I started working out. I like it. I love it. I'm getting some, you know, we have a uh, action step or just a nutrition coaching step that we call reading food labels, yeah. understanding calories, right? So, so she's like, you know, I'm just making better decisions because I understand now with the calories that I have to watch out a little bit. I've upgraded my veggies. I'm eating my fruits and I'm having fun. It's great. And they always ask the same question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But tell me, what is it? What is it? What are you doing? Yeah. What, what true. is it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, if you decide to take, you know, uh, anabolics or performance based, you know, uh, uh, you know in drug improvement stuff, it is going to make a difference. Mm. But, you know, I've, I've competed against guys who are on drugs and they still sucked. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird to say this now, you know, they, 
that throwing the discus, you know, 49, 50 meters on anabolics, and I'm throwing 58 to 60 meters clean, and they're going, well, so what are you on? Well, I'll tell you what I'm on. I Olympic lift, I front squat, I do my hill sprints, you know, I throw the discus every day. The secret is, there there is no secret. Or, or, Or just put it like this, the secret is hard work, and maybe just you know, doing the basics, staying, you know, getting up, showing up. I, you said this, right? I think you said this. Uh, I paraphrased it. Um, half of it, half of the game is showing up and then being consistent. And most Keep people going. have problem with, with the second part, staying consistent, yeah. right? My two secrets to success. Well, actually, there's three. But one is to show up. Yeah. Two is to keep going. Yeah. And most people don't keep going. Yes, the consistency part. It's And, you know, I've been lifting integral. weights. What year were you born? 1984. Say that number again? 1984. <laughs> okay, so I've been coaching five years before you were born. Okay. I started lifting weights 20 years before you were born. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so three days a week for 20 years before you showed up on the planet Earth as a newborn, I'd been yeah, lifting weights. Yeah. And when somebody mm. asked me, Dan, how do you know so much about weightlifting? I usually tell mm. them like, well, I didn't just wake up one day and go, oh, look, I read. <laughs> oh, look, oh, I read a book. Here, here's a piece of paper. Oh, here. Here's yeah, a, leaf, you know. a leaflet, a flyer. Oh, I know how it, how it works now. <laughs> Someone left this on my car and I memorized yes. it. No, no it's, it, uh, it, uh, you know, you got to show up and you keep going and you pay attention. You, you, you take notes. You you make mm. mistakes. And that's what, by oh, the yep. way, yeah. get the mm. listener. It's okay to make mistakes. And the only thing is, it's nice to have somebody like a mentor, a coach, a, a close friend that can, you can, you can say, um, who can walk up to you and say, uh, you're going, you're, you're, you're screwing up here. Mm-hmm. Um, my mm-hmm. coach, Dick Notmeyer, and this is kind of an interesting thing. He's turning 90 this year. Wow. And so when I told him that uh, I was lifting on May 15th, he's 90 years old. And he, you could hear the enthusiasm in his voice. Correct. And he was, and when you have somebody like Dick, who's 90 years old and just like, and he told me my body weight, limit, I'll change it over to uh, kilos. He goes to me, basically, you know, Dan, you look best about just under a hundred kilos. That's when you compete the best. That's when you mm. walk. That's when you're, you look mm. the best. And I'm like, mm. um, so I weigh 102 now, but, um, so, you know, I got two more kilos to get to what, how long has Dick been my weightlifting coach since 1975? Mm, mm. So what's good about having my mentor, Dick Notmeyer still with us is that I can call him up and say, uh, this is happening and this is happening. He can go, well, you know what we, you know, and that's, that's why you need someone in your life. Uh, my friend, Amy is my, uh, we, we call our, we're called each other bragging buddies. And uh, we call each other- <laughs> I like that. And by the way, folks, just write this one down. Someone in your life that you can call up and just say, um, and and this kind of, I don't know if this is true where you're from, but if I tell Americans that I've lost uh, a large amount of weight, very often in America, they'll be like, well, that's because all you do is, you know, they'll always dismiss it somehow. Or if I make a lot of money with a book sale or something like that, you're not supposed to brag about it. Well, get yourself a bragging buddy. So when something good happens in her life, she calls me up and my job is to be as enthusiastic as I can. Yes. 100%. 100%. Not, and not piss on it, not shit on it. Yes. Just, just be happy and just be, that is such good news. That's great, man. So happy for you. So yes, I think you need a mentor, but I also think you need a, a bragging buddy. I like that. And, and here's the thing. And if you don't mind, what you want to start to build up is a tribe, a, yep. a, a group of people. And mm. it doesn't, and, and make sure if you can. So what happens is, and I tell you one thing, if you want to lose your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your spouse, a really quick way to get your relationship in trouble is to get in really good shape. Oh God. Yeah. I see you obviously, we- hurt. you know this. We, uh, if, from if, experience, yeah, from yeah, experience so with our clients. What's a common What's a common Swiss name for a woman? Give me a common name for a woman. Andrea. 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 Yeah. 
So Andrea starts coming to work out with me in a couple of weeks. I tell Andrea she needs to start eating vegetables at every meal. So for breakfast tomorrow, she serves eggs, bacon, and she has uh, potatoes there and extra peppers on the potatoes. And the husband says, oh, potatoes on the uh, peppers on the potatoes. And she says, yeah, Dan thinks, oh, Dan. Oh, Dan thinks this. Oh, Dan, 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 Dan. <laughs> Folks, this is what happens. Mm. Uh, if you want to ruin relationships, mm. get in better mm. shape. And uh, you know, people who drag you down are your mother, your father, your spouse, your kids, your close friends. You've got to actively look for people who support you. And you know, you said something. I like this aspect, first of all, of the, the bragging buddies, because mm -hmm. That's actually what we do with our clients. Just showing up, walking into the gym, with like big, big, huge smile on my face, on our face. Like, hey, how are you doing? Yes. And it, and the, you know what the funny thing is? It is not even a face that I put on because I know for some of our clients, it is such a a a leap for them to walk into a gym where you have the trainer and the and 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 the folks there look good and you're looking out of shape trying to get in shape and then you see the coach or the practitioner showing you the exercise like this is what a swing looks like let me show you and then they do it for themselves and then they look in the mirror and they're like it looks so crappy and they're like listen your first swings are your worst swings that's that's normal but and you try to really you know, be as empathetic as possible. Sell them. I always say the same thing when, when people say, will it look so good on you? I'm saying it's practice. Yeah, practice. This is not this is not a special skill, a special talent. It's practice. You, you're going to get there. It's because I I know where you're coming from. I was there as well. Maybe not with the weight, but with that, with the exercising, understanding the kettlebell. I know what it feels like. So with the bragging buddies, what we see uh, on, on this topic is we have a lot of women who lose a lot of weight and many times and we already it's not even it's not a warning how can i say it it's we tell them listen maybe something in your surrounding may change if you lose weight and get in better shape and look better and and right blah blah down. blah cuz i agree lose weight things change yeah and then they say most of the time they come back and they say, listen, I had to do some cleaning up because I go out with my friends, but I'm like, hey, listen, it's one beer and I'm done. Come on, man. Oh, come on, girl. Is that everything? Oh, now you're into fitness, right? <laughs> and you know, that kind of stuff. And one of her clients, she recently said, and because she restarted, she had, uh, she was off for four months, uh, four months because of surgery. And now she came back and she's like, you know what my friends said when I uh, when I had lunch with them? They said, oh, you're starting your fitness journey again. And I said, well, why did they notice it? And she was like, because I'm eating more veggies now. Uh -huh. And her friends were like, I couldn't do this. <laughs> and I'm like, you see? And, and they have this paradigm shift in their minds. It's like, wow, you know, it's things change. Things change and then it starts getting easy. And folks, like we talked about it before, are looking for the secret. And if they cannot find it, and it boils down to just work and trusting the process, trusting the coach, going through it, and yes, investing some money. Yes, it, it, it does involve this. Yeah. Then it's like you said, it's downplaying the results because it makes them maybe feel I don't, I don't know, maybe they, they don't feel adequate or they don't feel in the right spot next to people who are achieving their goals. And I can tell you it's the same in Switzerland. And Swiss people, you mentioned all the good things. I can tell you one big negative aspect in, in Switzerland is the jealousy part. Oh, okay. People have the tendency and they, they don't show it to you as maybe as, as, as uh, in contrast to the Americans who will probably say something. But in Switzerland, it's like, oh yeah, that's nice. And, <laughs> and you know, they think they're part, right? Yeah. And, but it's the same. I think the tendency to be jealous of somebody or, or which sometimes it really boils my blood out of one reason, because I see how much work they put in. Mm -hmm. And listen, it's, it's putting that amount of work in and trusting it. And we have, 
a lot of women, when, when we talk about nutrition coaching, we have them crying in our coaching sessions because it goes deep. Do you know about my thing called pirate maps? No. Is that it? A... Okay, so pirate Tell me more. map. Um, go pirate, to... pirate maps? Pirate maps? You know what a pirate yep. is? A buccaneer? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, pirate maps. So go to St. John's Island, find the white coconut tree, take seven paces to the west, dig down, there's a treasure. This is a concept from Pat Flynn. And what, what I do for, like, for example, on the back of my computer right here, on the in my bathroom mirror is my daily pirate map so the night before that just 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 follow along real quick and i'll go through it as fast as i can mm. so i believe a day starts with the night before so every night i make my to-do list for the next day mm. and then i take my supplements okay mm. so one to do to-do list supplements two every day i do a meditation so it's either a one minute meditation or like yesterday it was a full 15 minutes mm. uh three I eat vegetables at every meal. I do my daily mobility work. I do my mm -hmm. Olympic lifts. I go mm -hmm. for my heavy hands walk. Mm. Five, every day I try to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. So so when people ask me, how did you lose? And I've lost 10% of my body mass since January 1st. Uh, how many kilos would that be? I've lost uh, 11 kilos, maybe mm -hmm. 12 mm -hmm. since January 1st. How did I do it? Well. I make my to-do list before I go to bed. Yep. I take my supplements. Mm -hmm. I get a good night's sleep because I sleep better when I take, you know, when I don't worry about things. Mm -hmm. I meditate every day. I eat vegetables at every meal. I Olympic lift and walk up three to five to six days a week. Mm -hmm. And I try to make a difference. So Dan, what's mm -hmm. the secret? Well, I do a to-do list. I meditate. <laughs> I eat vegetables. I Olympic lift and walk. No, but what is the secret? Okay, let's go. So to me... But the problem is, if you do that for one day, you might say, well, that Olympic lift followed by the walk is a hard workout. Mm -hmm. But if you link together, let's see, uh, 20. So I'm probably at what, 80 in the almost sneaking up on 90 workouts this year already, right? Mm -hmm, Easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, just, I'm just doing simple math, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you link together 90 Olympic lifting workouts with 90 walks with, oh gosh, uh, 480 vegetable servings because you know probably you know mm -hmm. let's say 500 times i've eaten vegetables since january 1st right. yes i probably slept uh well this is gonna be tough but it was ballpark it uh 1200 hours plus mm -hmm. since january mm -hmm. 1st mm -hmm. well that's the secret yes that yeah that's the, the secret difference. the 1200 1500 hours of sleep the secret is the 500 vegetable servings the secret is the the 90 olympic lifting walk workouts that's the secret mm. but you've got to link them together like when you build a house you take a brick and you stick another brick on it and then you stick another brick on it oh. and if you give somebody a couple of weeks you've got yourself a house but if i just walk over with the one brick and hand it to you, you most people just see the one brick so that's if i if i understand it correctly that's the idea of the pirate map it's one thing leads to another. Is that right? The pirate map is this. If I do 365 days, 366 in the leap year, of the to-do list, supplements, good night's yes. sleep, yes. meditation, yes. vegetables at every deal, at the end of every year, I should make progress. At the yes. end of five of those years, yes. I should make a fair amount of progress. Yes. Here's the other thing too. It's hard to go backwards very much when every day builds on the other one. So ah, I don't do yeah. habit stacking, stacking yeah. the habits, habit stacking. It's, yeah. it's, that's good. Uh, I got this from uh, uh, Atomic Habits is the book. And yes, by yeah, James Clear. Uh, James Clear, habit so stacking. He went to uh, Denison University in Granville, Ohio, and his right. roommate is a friend of mine. Great. <laughs> and he quotes me in his books. Everything's connected. That's that's so great. Everything's connected. And so yeah, yeah. So what you do with habits and, and the mistake, and, and I got nothing against like for example, you know, when we're speaking, you know, May is just around the corner. So I'm gonna get re ready for you know uh, Lake Geneva bikini season. And so mm -hmm. for six weeks I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna, you know, really cut back on my calories, I'm gonna really sweat a lot. Mm. And at the end of the six weeks, I'm going to put on my bikini and I'm going to look great. Mm. Well, that's that's great. 
but mm -hmm. that's to me not a sustainable program i by the way i have nothing against six week eight week programs. yes that's yes yes but the mistake we make in with general population people is that they think it's just because yes. and i think that's what you said it's missing the longevity part right right it's it's and what you're saying i like i like this idea this visualization with the pirate map like you know one thing leads to another you follow the trail and then you end up with x and you know it's the same thing the analogy with the house building which i also like because it's all about um precision nutrition called it that way they say you have to stop focusing on the result and yeah. start focusing on the habit because the habit will eventually lead to the result that's why we we even uh coined our coaching or we just added this this word because i got it from pn and i got it from the book from james clear because now we say when we talk about nutrition coaching we talk about habit coaching and people always like well what's the meal plan well there is no meal plan well, you're going to try to eat 80% full for a week or two. Th that's you're it. Gonna add a vegetable for yes. a couple of weeks. Yes. And and uh, PN just recently, I think they, they had an awesome blog post where they talked about they had data from thousands of clients and they realized if people only do 50% of what what they have to accomplish in a year, they're good. They're, they're done. And we see it as well. It's, and we have these three fundamentals, upgrading the fruit, adding veggies, and some more movements, some more moving, just moving around. And what I always realized in coaching now is, and that's what I tell folks, it's like, listen, you start with one thing, because I like this statistic. Maybe you heard about the statistic. If you want to change one thing, chances are you reach it at about 80%. If you want to change two things at the same time, time, I think this number drops down to 30%. Oh, it, 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 it disappears at three. And at three, it's below 5%. It's yeah, like, it's, it's nowhere, awesome. all right? So, so I like the idea of this habit coaching idea. I just lost my train of thought. Oh, where was I? We're talking Before about that. habits. Yeah, we're talking about habits. Uh, and pirate uh, maps, building the house. Pirate, yeah, building the house, yeah. habits. Yes, because, yeah, yeah, because it's the three things that we focus on, right? Mm -hmm. And then I tell them, if you start changing one thing, yes, the, the chances are high that you will reach that thing that you want to change. And now here comes the magic part. New thoughts will come in. And the Bible calls it, or Paul calls it in the Bible, he says it, renew your mind. So that's what happens if you just start one habit. I remember one, uh, one client, he one day walked in and he was like, Gregory, you won't believe what, I, what, what, what a thought I had last week. I was like, let me know. He said, I was thinking about running a marathon. I was like, ooh, that's great. He said, I never in my life had this thought cross my mind. And we had this happen multiple times. It's like recently one of our clients, she said, you know, you mentioned this thing about calorie tracking, just just seeing and getting a feeling, just not doing it the whole day or the whole year or that you won't succeed without it. It's just a supportive tool. It's like a good tool for the job. And she said, I started tracking and I realized, well, I'm a little bit too high. So I was like, maybe I have to. I realized, wow, I can eat more veggies because they're low in calories. But the only step that we agreed on that we want to change is upgrading the fruit intake. But this one habit really set, opened the, the, uh, a, a can of worms, so to speak, with new thoughts, which is so and, incredible. And, and I just, and, oh, I'm gonna have to bounce here in a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm gonna have yeah. to get to, I'm gonna have to get to work. This is starting to bounce off my head. Yes, uh, yes. Do you want to come back and meet again and get through those other questions? Uh... Yes, yes, most definitely. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it and consider subscribing if you want to see more kettlebell content. If you're looking for a beginner program that takes you from a beginner level to a slowly advanced level with gradually increasing difficulty in the workouts and combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching, then check out 90 Days of Kettlebells. You find the link in the description, 14 day free trial included.